I just wanted to talk briefly, say just specifically chat GPT, you mentioned that even you were surprised maybe by the number of jobs it could make obsolete. I mean, if, if just we looked at that narrow AI and watch as it develop from maybe three, five to four, and you probably know what four looks like more than I do, that alone, like what percentage of jobs in the world do you think it takes away? Um, to be honest, I haven't tried to make that that calculation, but if you if you don't look at Chat GPT in particular, but you you, you look at large language models and various technologies built on, on, on top of them, which will be by a variety of different companies, not just open AI, right? So say when, as well as doing AGI research in SingularityNet and other SingularityNet ecosystem companies like True AGI, we're working on combining large language models with logical reasoning systems to sort of decrease the bullshit coefficient and and make language models more, more able to understand the real world and connect connect what they read with with actual facts, but that's all part of the code ecosystem around lang large language models, right? So if if you look at everything that will develop around large language models in the in the next few years, I mean it seems it seems like you're looking at a majority of white collar jobs. Right. And I mean, whether that majority is 55 or 75 percent, I, I, I haven't tried to make that 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 calculation. The reason it's subtle is there's not that many people where their whole job will be eliminated by one of these AI systems, because most most human jobs involve I mean, most human most human white collar jobs involve a lot of repetitive crappy make work and then some bits and pieces where now and then some contextual understanding and basic in insight is needed right and so what 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 has to happen is sort of rearranging of industries and and work environments so that ai slices off the pieces it can do and the pieces that AI can't do yet are, are moved into new human job descriptions, right? And so you, I mean, you can, you can see that, for example, in graphic arts, like now you can type in a textual prompt, like you know, sh sh show show me a picture of like, uh, you know, some old dogs eating a a pill fed by their young, attractive, loving owner, and then becoming young and shiny, energetic dogs, and then. Then you'll you'll get a picture, a short animation of that, right? But so you don't need a human to make that picture or that little movie anymore. The AI will do it. You do need a human to write the prompt and figure out exactly what to tell the AI to do. The human who was good at making the graphic art might not be the human who's best at making that prompt to tell the AI what to do, right? And so you, you're getting rid of one job classification, graphic artist, you're creating another one, prompt engineer, right? Figuring out the text prompt to give the AI. The thing is, you may get rid of 10 graphic artists and replace them with one prompt engineer, right? So you're you're reshuffling the job titles and job categories and, re and reorganizing an, an industry. And the precise way to do that differs across each industry, right? So it's, now there are some job categories that will just be obsoleted, right? Like in in say the drive-through at a fast food restaurant, the person sitting there at that little window and listening to what you say in the little microphone, like I want three burgers, or fries, and a shake. Like okay, that that job is just gone very soon, right? Be because I mean it's just a human doing speech processing and then typing it. Then they hear someone say hamburger and then they push the hamburger button on the cash register, right? So that. Some jobs like that are just gone and it's easy to say, but a lot more are partially gone and reshuffled into, into different job categories. And figuring out that reshuffling itself creates jobs, right? But that, but again, that creates a small number of jobs for people who understand AI and understand understand each each industry. It creates fewer jobs than it than it obsoletes. But then 
but even if even if it's only like half of white collar jobs being obsoleted in the next like three to five years, that's still incredibly huge, right? And then and that's very possible, half. Very possible, right? And then, but then we have to look at the implications of these same sorts of technologies for robotics, right? Because one of, I mean, factory robotics is already rolling out big time, particularly in, in, in Asia, in J- Japan, Korea, T- T- Taiwan, main, mainland China, and so forth. But we're seeing now research papers applying large neural models to make robots better able to adapt to new tasks, right? And I mean, th- this will be very, very big for for robots in factories, robots in warehouses, robots doing all, all sorts of, of, of physical things. So, I mean, I think the rate of progress may be a little slower here at first than in, in software, just because I mean, instrumenting factories to make new robots takes some time, and there's there's still problems with global supply chains due to U.S.-China tensions and, and post-COVID hassles and so on. But still, I think the biggest bottleneck in robotics has been AI. I think factory robotics and warehouse robotics is a narrow AI problem, not an AGI problem, but by, by, by and large. Whereas home service robotics, maybe more of an AGI problem because like my house is a mess. You need superhuman general intelligence just to find your way past all the toys the kids left on the floor. Right. But uh, and but uh, a factory, you can design and sculpt the environment to suit the, the AI. So, I mean, it seems like you'd say five to seven years, a little bit longer than vast majority of manual labor type jobs will, will be obsoleted by advanced neural models controlling various sorts of robots and, and automation systems. And it doesn't have to be humanoid robots looking like humans, right? Like you can see, take a McDonald's or something. I mean, you don't need a human hand flipping that burger, right? All, all, all you need is like a burger producing machine. You just feed in the raw material. Truck comes up, can be a self-driving truck, which already works, basically, right? I mean, and a you know, self-driving tr- truck comes up and uh, you know delivers delivers the stuff into the the McDonald's food making machine. That machine spits out burgers into a bag, drops it off the conveyor belt to, to people who ordered on a on a, a tablet or, or on, on their phone, right? I mean, you don't you don't need a humanoid there. The technology to fully automate McDonald's fully exists, right? It's just the cost has cost has got to come to, come down a bit, a bit, a bit more. And so, and I mean, advancing AI is part of the cost coming down, coming down a, a bit more. Because the smarter the AI is, the more flexibility you have in, in designing the, the the hardware with with low cost. Right, so so I, mean, I think that's potentially four billion people out of a job. Yeah, at, 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 at least that, 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 that's right. And the and we'll, but ben, the what about here, will, though, will more jobs be created? Like when you know when the tractor came will along, be created. It's just a smaller number of jobs, and there won't so be that, these new creative that, jobs. Like there won't, like when we see the industrial revolution or any other advance in technology, we've always, you know, been surprised to learn that once humans retrain themselves, they could find themselves doing new things in this new paradigm. But you don't see that yeah, happening. Yeah, but, th- but th- this is this is. Uh, I mean, this is just different. I mean, some things, some things are game changers in 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 human life, right? Like, those were just a game changer. There was no precedent for that in in in, in human history, right? And air, air travel was it was a game changer. I mean, you could just uh, you could fly around the world in in part of a day. The internet was a game changer. So, that, I mean, there are some things. You just you can't extrapolate to understand mobile m- mobile phones are are, are are also a game changer that happen within our within our lifetime right so I mean I think yeah new jobs were created in the industrial revolution new jobs will be created now in the next phase of the AI revolution but they're going to be just many many fewer than the jobs that are are eliminated I mean that and the graphic arts example is a great one right I mean you. Yeah, you'll need people to write the prompts to guide the AI, 
that just takes many less human hours than 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 drawing the the AI. And I, I mean, I mean that's uh, that same thing is going to repeat itself over and over and over and over again, right? So I mean, of course, you need people to program the you need people to program the AIs too, right? And I mean, you you need you need people to figure out how to restructure a company to to use AI. So I, I mean, there's there's certainly plenty of use for humans in this next phase of the AI revolution. Like neither you or I is going to be out of a job in, in until there's really human level AGI, right? Because I mean, creating AGI systems, narrow AIs don't, don't know how to do. And I mean, what, 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 what you do of sort of trying to crystallize the essence of, of what's going on in, 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 in the world into a concise way that, that, a broad number of people can easily understand. I mean, this this requires really deep contextual understanding of the world, not just summarizing stuff, right? So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. I'm looking for partners, collaborators, colleagues who wanna join forces with me around the globe and create real value generational wealth, and financial freedom for everyone else around the world. Get involved in the cryptocurrency markets. Get involved in the NFT markets. This is your moment. Life all comes down to a few moments. Don't let this pass. Now it's not too late. Next year's gonna be too late. Ultimately, this is about freedom. That's the way I see it. This is about giving power back to the people and enabling billions of people worldwide to use the financial markets to improve their lives and those of their friends and their families and their communities. Honestly, I think it's a violation of human rights not to allow people basic access to financial services. Because right now people are being kept in the dark, they're being robbed of education, and it's a travesty. And so I'm looking for people that wanna join me and be a part of this solution. And that all happens inside the DeFi Academy. The gains my students are making are absolutely amazing. Double, triple digit gains in the first month alone. That's amazing. This will change your life. Now is the time to get involved. I'm gonna tell you exactly how my students in my academy made money in the last 30 days. I'm talking about real trading results. And let me just whet your appetite a little bit. Let me hit you with some numbers. I'm talking Brendan from New Zealand is up 68.77% on the month. Steve from Europe up 83%. Albert in Singapore up 169.9% on one single trade. I got Susan up 153% on her call options alone. Also rocking 139% returns and 442% returns as well on individual trades. These are people that are changing their financial future in the last 30 days but it's based on trading discipline. I've graduated over 500 students from inside my academy from over 54 countries around the world. It's amazing. When it comes to crypto, DeFi, and blockchain, we love this space. We truly believe it's the future. This is down to our core. It's authentic to what we're doing, and everybody can tell through the camera because you can't make this stuff up. If you're watching me now, wherever you are, I implore you, take 60 seconds right now and join my academy, apply today. Now you've got a chance. Life all comes down to a few moments. What are you gonna do? What's the choice that you're going to make?